Hi, Fabio. Hey, Dr. Westover. How you doing? Good. Oh, you, we've got a guest here. He's already here. Wow. Welcome. Hello, everyone. It's Larry Hirsch. Hi, Larry. Dr. Hirsch. Well, we're, it's fortunate that you're here. We're about to, I, I think Fabio and I were about to let this patient come off of uh, LTM. We've done a screening EG. It's, you know, 10 minutes long and <laughs> looks pretty normal to us so far. Yeah. We're ten tired minutes. Of so we're gonna take a Wow, you're you're very patient. You waited a whole ten minutes. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Do you, do you think it uh, anything looks abnormal or any any concerns? Uh, no, nothing looking too uh, too worrisome on this page. But ten minutes is not going to uh, satisfy me most of the time. But this patient, they, uh, you know, every once in a while, he. Uh, stops responding, which you know sounds. He probably just you know not paying attention. I guess it's uh, yeah, it's fine. Just uh, distractible, presumably. Okay. Just kidding. Actually, I'm th this is not really symmetric. Looks like it looks like the yeah, exactly the left hemisphere is a little slower, especially in the uh, middle of the page here. Got more delta on the left. This is a left right left right montage. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit more washed out on the left too. So probably something focal going on with this guy. Uh, but you're not giving me any history, right? Nope. Just the age. 81 years old. That's it. 81 years old. It's got some slowing on one side and he's in the hospital. So mm -hmm. that's true. Most likely he had a stroke, but and now he's having some funny spells. But am I allowed to go to the quantitative? Yeah. You need that crutch. You can scroll. Um, I, do, I definitely right. need, need that crutch if I want to go fast. Oh, that's all I needed. Fabio assured me this was normal. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken his word for it. Wait a minute. Oh, it's very, very pretty. Yeah. So, um, well, maybe the key is actually this seizure probability one here at the bottom, which is showing a very high chance of seizures according to this computer analysis in a pretty regular fashion. So let's see how far apart of the every 10 minutes or so, no. something like that. Well, now, I should mention the uh, arrangement of the panels is uh, left temporal, left parasagittal, then right temporal, right parasagittal. So it doesn't okay. quite match the, the, the double right. band. Okay. Well, I didn't need any of that. I have the asymmetry spectrogram. It shows all the power during the seizures is red. So it's coming from the right. So these are right-sided seizures, which is interesting since I thought the left was actually the sicker hemisphere. Um, so it looks like we're going to be seeing cyclic seizures. Of course, I do want to click on one of them and confirm that. Uh, which I think I, yeah, there we go. Mm. Um, the other is as far as where is it? Well, you see it in the whole right hemisphere. So I can't tell too much from from this spread, but now you can see it's coming out of the posterior portion of the right hemisphere. Mm -hmm. does, this nice, meet, nice. does it meet our you know, the definition? What is this? This patient's just lying still. Um, so does this, Right. why is this a seizure? Ah, good question. So yes, it does in, in many ways. I'm, I went back. So now I'm back in the beginning of it. So you'll see um, it's starting in the right posterior, pretty limited to parietal occipital so far. So you're going to see it spread. It's also going to change both frequencies and morphology. So it got a little faster. Uh, you clearly see it now on the other side. Um, it's much slower up here. It looks more regular too, more more rhythmic than it was yeah. at the beginning. Yep. Um, so it's a clearly evolving seizure. Now it's down to two hertz and different morphology again. So very clearly a definite electrographic seizure. I don't yet know if it's an electroclinical seizure. I'd have to look at the video. You'd be able to, to sing the sound of this seizure? <laughs> no, but you can. <laughs> I think it goes, woo! It's pretty good, yeah, it slows down. It speeds up and then it mostly decrescendos. Yeah, it's pretty quick to get into fast. You can even see that on the quantitative. Or let's see if we can zoom in on one of these guys. We'll go uh, 30 minutes. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. So you see it jumps yeah. pretty quickly and then it slows down. And this diagonal is very helpful. It's, that's pretty much evolution of frequency gradually getting slower and slower. Mm. Um, I don't have the rhythmicity panel shown, but that's another good way to look at it. Mm. How does the asymmetry map uh, work, Dr. Hirsch? So uh, it's a spectrogram, so it's showing all frequencies. So it's delta at the bottom and up. I uh, can't actually, so there, I it's can't tell 18. what the upper number is. 18 hertz at the top. 18. Yep. Um, and it basically compares the two sides. And if the power on one's on the right is more, then it'll be red. And if it's more on the left, it's blue. So in the lower frequencies, you actually see there's a little more blue. So that's probably some of that delta slowing we were seeing mm. on the left side. But these seizures that come in at pretty high frequencies come from the right. So now we've got bilateral dysfunction, it looks like. Hmm. Interesting. When you call these cyclic seizures, what, what um, did you mean by that? Um, well, that basically means they're happening at a fairly regular rate. So you see, it looks like it's almost like periodic discharges, but on a scale of seizures over many minutes. Hmm. Uh, so we tend to call that cyclic seizures. Hmm. Um, and sometimes you'll see in between there's actually a, first there's attenuation, there's a gradual ramping up of as the background recovers. And then as it gets to a certain point, it then seizes again. I don't necessarily see that here. Let's hmm. see if I zoom in a little more. Well, not much, there's a little bit of the less power goes down to the bottom here and you see it build up a little bit and then have another seizure, but hmm. not the greatest example of that build up in between. So let's see uh, if we go on. So is it is it really st status, Dr. Hirsch? Can we call it status as well? Uh, another great question. So according to the brand new 2021 ACNS terminology, you can if the seizures occupy more than 20% of the record. Uh, this one's actually pretty close to that. If you can show clinical carlet, of course, then it's, mm -hmm. and he's impaired the whole time, then it's definite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how would, um, what, 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 when do you see cyclic seizures? What, you know, what are there certain, does this make you think of certain conditions or, mm. or uh, does it tell you anything specific about what's going on? I don't think so. Um, it's, to me, it's just another form of bad non-convulsive status. Mm -hmm. Um, it's better than continuous seizures, but obviously it's worse than just having an isolated seizure or two. Now, do these, do these um, damage the brain? This used to be a controversial topic. Uh, is it still? Sure. Uh, yeah, we, I think every meeting has some, some kind of debate on which patterns are hurting the brain and which ones are not. Um, so this kind of thing with cyclic intermittent seizures like this is a good example of that. Um, I think in an acutely injured brain with really frequent seizures that reach fairly high frequencies like this is a very good chance it's gonna contribute to neuronal injury. On the other hand, if this was a, if there's no acute brain injury, it might be able to handle it better. So if you told me this is somebody who had epilepsy and from the right side for years and now is in with some metabolic problem and his seizures just got a little worse, he might be able to handle this. But if he's got an acute infarct or hemorrhage on that side, I'd be much more concerned. How would you manage this patient? So I would definitely uh, make sure he's on some anti-seizure medication. Um, that's assuming there's nothing rapidly reversible like his glucose is 900 or something like that that you can fix. Um, get him off his cefepime, theophylline, imipenem, and uh, lithium. Um, but yeah, I usually end up loading with something like levetiracetam, some non-sedating anti-seizure medication. And how long should we keep him on EEG, do you think? How do I tell the team? Uh, just about one year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should work. Well, if you're gonna tell me 10 minutes, I'm gonna go with the other extremes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we usually try and do it till seizures are gone for a day or so, mm -hmm. um, or at least it's been 
stable or improving for probably more like two days if you can't get rid of them completely. Cool. Any, any final parting words of wisdom? I should point out that I couldn't read this thing at all without the quantitative. I really rely on that. And yeah. So just by opening that window, I instantly knew this was <laughs> seizures over time. And yeah, it's so it doesn't, doesn't take that long to learn it and it'll save you a lot of time and help you understand the whole EG, not just one page. So perfect. Use your quantitative. Thank you.